And continuing on with our How Do You Punt series, um, we got a, well, look, we've got a pretty controversial one this week, I think, track bias. Now, um, I, look, I suppose punters sometimes use it as an excuse to explain why their horse that didn't win. But there's no doubt, um, look, I know, Mick, a, a couple of weeks ago, mate, you put something on Twitter, uh, I think it was the Rose Hill meet there, uh, and you uh, put a rocket up the, the, the inside rail and uh, sort of something that indicated it was a bit slower outside those lanes. A couple of canoes, on. mate. What's that, mate? A couple of canoes down the outside. couple of canoes down the outside. So certainly there's no doubt that Mick Gannon is someone who believes in track bias. So before we hand over to the punters, I want to ask you the question, Mick. Track bias, does it exist? And if it does, tell us a bit about uh, you know, how, I mean, what are the tips for punters? How do you actually use it? Um, and uh, yeah, let's then throw over to the punters. Awesome. Well, pretty obviously it exists, right? So uh, don't get me started. But let's have a little chat about maybe how we can uh, assess it. And there's probably two ways you can use track bias. One is assessing it on the run and what we're going to do with it during the meeting. And the other one is obviously a review version of it. And we're seeing a, a pattern that's emerging, which Dino and I touched on on Monday, um, about a round week meeting where the runners um, that were back and wide really struggled to run on. And since then, they've come through that meeting and really produced some great results. We'll see a bit more of that on Saturday. And Ronnie also touched on it earlier in the interview. Um, but if we're betting on the run, probably more importantly, some of the best um, punters in the history of the game uh, and from memory, I think it was Stewie Davidson um, where I learned this from, um, was watching a video somewhere, rah, rah, rah. He suggested that waiting, the, waiting out the first one, two, three races and getting a good eye for the track was everything. It allowed those big boys to be able to chime in with confidence. Now, look, if there's no bias, obvious, fine, great, play on as, as, you, were, as you were going. Um, but really getting an early feel for that. The next thing is obviously, let's just say, the, the most easiest one to describe would be if we just got an obvious on-pace bias there and not looking for a two dollar shot winning i'm talking if something's in a seven eight nine ten dollar mark and and they they're, they're leading and they're kicking and they're still there in the finish and they, they have no right to be that's pretty obvious right so using that information make a decision how do you make the decision well you've got to do your speed maps right be aware of what jockey is capable some jockeys aren't capable of going you know they just don't have that instinct to go go hard so just be careful um, don't hope that a jockey is going to go forward and be aggressive. Look for those aggressive jockeys like a Nash Rewilla, Josh Parr, Tim Clark. They're the kind of guys that are going to be really aggressive. You know they ride well. Uh, and then make bet accordingly. Yeah, okay. So, I, I mean, look, the, the thing that always gets me, I mean, I'm, that's certainly something I do. I like to sort of, uh, you know, chip down the first few races till you get a bit of a feel for what's going on or even hold out. You know, might, might get through some of the gardening before I get to the races, um, race screen. I mean, the question I've got though, Mick, is look, you know, you might see if some runners come down the outside and, and assume the outside lanes are quicker. Um, you know, how do you know that it's just not been a fast pace? They've got a nice cart or, you know, look at the end of the day, they're just going better. What if it's just even and, and they're going better? Uh, and that's why, and as a result, you know, they're a back marker and they've had to come down the outside. I mean, do we assume very quickly that it is uh, track bias when, yeah, uh, it's potentially just other factors playing out. Yeah, the data out there is great, you know, and it's interesting when you mentioned about sectional data. In, re in reviewing sectional data, it's not something I necessarily look at, but during the meeting, you look at those early sectionals and on the top right or top left um, on racing.com or on Sky um, in those Sydney and Melbourne races. So you, you can see how fast they've gone. And just by using that, like if they're running 12s, you know, over, over 1,400, you know, 1,400, 1,200 metres, like, you know, they're going slow, right? So if, they, if they've gone out like in the Congo did and it was flying and kept going, there's obviously some bias there, but it's just a good horse as well. So just check those sessionals out, work out what's fast, what's slow, and, and then they're going to be a pretty good indicator um, as, as to how the track's playing. All right, well, so there we go, uh, punters. There's uh, certainly a view that track bias is the play we heard uh, – Ron Duffercy earlier, certainly, uh, I think his, his words were actually, there's no doubt there was track bias. Uh, we've had Mick Gannon here uh, putting a case forward for track bias. Does track bias exist? And uh, look, if it does, how do you go about taking it into consideration when uh, you, you, you're taking the, 
uh, consideration, all the other form variables and you pile them together. We want to hear from you. It's all about your thoughts, uh, not just ours. So post wherever you're watching this, Twitter, uh, YouTube, um, or Facebook. Uh, we're really interested to hear what you've got to say. We'll respond. Um, and all thoughts are valuable. So whether or not uh, others agree or disagree, that's what it's about. Mick, thanks for that one. Um, we'll uh, see how things pan out this weekend with regards to track bias. Thanks, mate. Look forward to it.